Hey guys, um, sorry for the noise. Hold on just a second, let these fire trucks go by. Um, welcome to Finish Friday. We are gonna be going over kitchen cabinets today. And I'm gonna tell you, um, I noticed when I was getting ready to go live that I have paint on my shirt. Um, I think I have paint on every article of clothing I own, but it's okay. Um, so, I'm really excited about a couple of things. I'm excited to be able to go over with you how to rescue and restore your kitchen cabinets. Um, the other thing I'm excited about is the fact that um, I have put together a bundle that is really um, easy for you to be able to do exactly what it is that I'm teaching you today. If you didn't catch me do a live the other day, I was at the uh, rescue, the rescue store, the restore, restore by Habitat for Humanity. And I was teaching you that I want you to go in and grab some kitchen cabinet doors or drawers and I want you to paint those instead of your kitchen cabinets first. Remember when I was doing that Facebook Live, I talked to you and I said, okay, what I'd really like for you to do is to do a light color, um, like Bauhaus Buff, which is our number one selling color, to do a medium value color, um, or something that's maybe a little out of your comfort zone. I'm wanting to push you that direction just a little bit and then do a dark color. So I put a bundle together that I want you to look at really quickly. There's a great value on this too, only because it's not probably a smart business decision of mine, but I'm wanting to be able to teach my students. So what I've done is I've put all of this together in a bundle. So you are going to get um, the small sample size of our clean slate. You're gonna get an Amy Howard at Home synthetic brush, which you can use to actually paint your cabinets. You're gonna get a small Mind Your Own Beeswax. You're gonna get a small Ceruzzi wax. And then you're gonna get three colors. You're gonna get the colors that I am gonna be showing you here how to do, as well as what I really want to encourage you to paint on some sample doors first. That's why I want you to go to Restore. So um, I'm gonna set this down because these are the colors that I have painted these cabinet doors. Now, I don't know if you remember the other day when I was at Restore, I showed you where you can buy the cabinet doors for $1. So um, if you're really good, you can talk to them and you can say, okay, look, if I buy this many, can I have a deal? Because a lot of times they will do that for you. Um, but we wanna make sure that with this bundle, that way you can clean them, you can wax them, and you can see all the different looks that I'm gonna show you how to do today. So, um, remember, we're coming to you live. It's Friday, May 10th, the Friday before Mother's Day. So I just wanna say to all my moms out there, um, happy Mother's Day. I know that you work tirelessly. I know that a lot of times you probably don't get the credit, you don't get the love, you don't get the, um, job well done. You work tirelessly. Um, that's why I had so much fun going last night and buying gifts for all my mom friends and all my moms that I work with. It's so fun to be able to bless somebody because I know that they're incredible women. They love so selflessly um, and um, I just want to honor them. So take an opportunity to be able to honor the women in your life um, who knows, you could say, hey, if you want to redo your kitchen, I'll help you. Because I say that you need somebody, you need a partner in crime, somebody you enjoy being around because you're going to be in each other's face and you're going to be all over one another to help you paint your kitchen. So I have invited someone here today to help me teach you um, how to rescue and restore your kitchen because it's so easy. Um, and that person would be my best friend, Jean Howard. So come on over. Well, you caught me off guard. You said best friend. I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> so the other thing is too, we don't know what he's gonna say. He says stuff and so we tell him behave when we get him on here. So, um, you know, one of the things, Gene, and we've done this, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't know. I think we've moved how many times? Seven, maybe. Eight. I think it's more than that. Um, we've moved a lot. I wanna say it's more like 10 or 11, but, um, and homes that we've redone and flipped. And I'm gonna tell you, if you are a mm -hmm. flipper, if mm -hmm. you like doing that, the process that we're gonna be showing you today mm -hmm. is also phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Because if you're gonna have your kitchen redone, if you have to pay someone, a professional painter to come in, um, as a rule, Gene, what would you say? What would they charge? 
They could charge on cabinets alone several thousand dollars and up, depending on how many, uh, the type of paint, the type of finish that you're wanting, uh, but at least three. 3,000, maybe 4,000. 4, mm -hmm. So, and a, a lot of people, they're like, well, then I can't do it. And I hate my kitchen. I wanted to title this segment, I hate my kitchen. Because when I talk to people, that's what they say. They go, I hate my kitchen. And here's the frustrating part. It's the center of the house. It's where everybody goes to. I was raised Baptist. So, um, where did we all, where did we all wind up? In the kitchen. We're wanting everybody to be in the den. We want everybody to be in it. They're all going to wind up in the kitchen um, because that's where we're eating. That's the hub of the family. So we've got to make sure that those kitchen cabinets <coughs> look phenomenal. And what we're showing you today can be also used on uh, bathroom vanities as well. So it's, central, it's 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. If you are live and you're watching this, you're catching us live, show, tell us where you're from. Um, say, I'm from... Minnesota, or yeah, I hate my kitchens, my kitchen too, or what? A, let me know where you're from. Um, and then that way we want you to ask questions. So we have somebody here handling Facebook and we have somebody handling Instagram, and they're gonna ask us questions live um, as we go through this whole process. So welcome. Um, so, Jean, as we go over uh, doing kitchen cabinets, uh -huh. what would be um, the first thing that when we walk into our kitchen, um, and and we have decided what finish we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We know what color we're going to do. We've bought our supplies, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that, I guess, in just a minute, as far as how much we're going to need. Well, so let me back up. As far as making a decision, and we've gotten the bundle, we like our color, let's talk about square footage. Let's talk about coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so with a quart of the one-step paint, um, about how much square footage is this going to cover? One coat of this will do anywhere between 100 and 120 square feet. Okay. So if I'm going to do an average size kitchen, I'm going to need about four to five quarts of this paint, right? Mm -hmm. And the way you can measure your cabinets to see how many square feet you have, just measure the width of your cabinets and the height of your cabinets and do it in feet and then multiply it. So if you've got 10 feet this way and you've got four feet this way, you've got 40 square feet of cabinets. And this will do 100 to 120 square feet, one coat, so you know you'll get eight, you'll get to uh, be able to take one quart, two, uh, two coats to do that set of cabinets. So hopefully that helps Love with, that. The, with the mathematics. Love that. So, um, so having four to five quarts of paint is gonna do your average let's just say medium-sized average kitchen with no problem. Um, so, all right, so I've got my paint. I want to make sure um, that I've got my clean slate, that I'm going to paint my mm -hmm. kitchen cabinets. Clean. You're going to need a large, what did I say? To paint your cabinets. To clean, clean your cabinets. Clean your cabinet. I really need you here, don't um, I? Okay, to clean our cabinets. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, we'll, of course, we'll have our brush from our bundle. Mm -hmm and then our wax, we'll need a large container of that. So I've got all my materials together. Um, I'm gonna need some painter's tape, painter's tape. and then um, some rags, some tools, some tools like my screwdriver. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is... Pray. <laughs> or hire a painter, which... <laughs> no. First thing we wanna do, we wanna remove the hardware. Uh, so you're gonna have some type of knobs or handles that will be on the doors and drawers of your cabinets. So first thing we want to do, we want to remove those. And you can either use an electric screwdriver or manual. We like manual. And we'll remove that. Real important. Put the screw that goes with it back into the hardware. And if your hardware is all the same, there's no need to number the pulls or the knobs if they're if they're all the same because they're gonna it can be interchanged and we'll just have a little bag that we can keep up with them and put it in there if you've got your cabinet doors and let's say most most of your cabinets uh, after around the 80s or so 80s to 90s they use what's called a European hinge and the European hinge fits into the cabinet 
as so, and there's adjustments on it to allow the door to be adjusted back and forth, left to right, in or out, through these different adjustment screws. Uh, it's very time consuming to have 10, 15, 20 doors that you're having to readjust. So what you want to do is after you've taken the screws out and you remove the hinge, let's number that hinge. Let's make some kind of marking on it with your Sharpie. Sharpie. You can either put some painter's tape on it and mark it or just mark it right on the piece itself because you're not going to see it and we'll put a corresponding piece inside here, put a little piece of tape over it so tape to, uh, paint doesn't cover it up. So that's and then numbered. It's numbered, um, alphabet, hieroglyphics, whatever you want to use to make sure the two are married back together. So only because you marked that. So I'm gonna just say like, this is gonna be A. So that way, when I'm marking this, that's mm -hmm. gonna be A, a. and that's gonna be A, mm -hmm. and then this would also be A and no, because that, that hinge over here is going to be a different adjustment. Fair, okay, so then that, that needs to be B. B. Yes. Awesome. So mm -hmm. it's not by door, mm -hmm. it's, it's by, by the hinge. hardware it's and the hinge and where it marries. One, each one's adjusted differently. Okay, um, I'm just going to tell you something. Not only is he as cute as a bug, but he is so smart. A lot of people don't know this, and I'll brag on you, so don't listen and don't say anything. Gene graduated from FIT. Oh, yeah, let's he see. trained with the astronauts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's so smart. So when he's telling you this, this is his engineer's mind. So that's why we make for a great partnership. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm creative, it. and he is um, he's my technical dude. So figure, that's why the, it's called a figure outer. <laughs> he's my figure outer. Okay, are there any questions thus far? I have one question. Okay. Um, Someone asked if their cabinets are stained, do they need to sand them first? No, no. need to sand. No. No sanding, that's what, no so, priming, and no stripping. That's right. So that's why um, we wanted to go over the hardware first because that way we're now we're going to go into the paint portion, cleaning and painting portion. And I think that's one thing. It's what scares a lot of people because they mentally cannot think. I'm going to put a water-based paint on top of a cabinet door that's a lacquer and it's primed with a lacquer mm -hmm. and it's finished with mm -hmm. a professional finishing process of like these kitchen cabinets mm -hmm. that come and get put in installed in our homes um but yes it's as easy as that that's why i want you to see how miraculous it can be by going to restore buying the kitchen cabinets as close to what like you have and then painting it and you're going to see um how incredible how incredibly easy it is. All right, is there anything else we need to talk about this before we get started? Once the hardware's off, the next step will be clean slate. All right, so here's a key too. These kitchen cabinet drawers, This uh, I bought this at Restore. Um, this is actually painted, and it's painted with oil, probably, More than likely. by whoever painted it. This was painted with oil. Um, it's dirty. So, Jean, show us real quick. How how do I need to um, how do I need to clean this? First, we'll have a just you want to use a cotton rag, something that you know preferably is lint free. We don't like paper towels because there's a lot of lint with paper towels, um, and they don't hold up as well as the cotton rag does. So, when you get your uh, bundle, you're going to notice that there's a tab. Um, that you're going to have to pull, and that's going to open up for that clean slate for you to be able to use it. And then our clean slate, now our clean slate is a refinisher's grade cleaning, furniture cleaner. And what it does, it removes the wax, the oil, the grease, the grime, anything that's on here that would prevent the paint from adhering. Getting you might want to look at it because it's really dirty. You know, here's the other thing, guys. Um, the, a lot of people think if they use simple green, if they use paint thinner or lacquer thinner, um, that that does it. It does not get the wax off. This was formulated, it took us a year and a half to create this, and it will actually take wax off that allows you to be able to go directly to painting. If you don't get all the wax off, it could act as a surfactant. 
um, to, or a barrier mm -hmm. that would make it to where the paint would not adhere. Mm -hmm. Right, Jean? The other thing is, after you apply the wax, if you use one of, the, uh, one of our brushes, you can clean um, the wax out of the brush with the clean slate. And the nice thing about the clean slate is once I put it on and clean it, <coughs> give me a dry rag. Sure. Then all we want to do is just take, you'll notice there's still a little of the wet residue from the clean slate, and we just come back and we want to wipe that off. Yeah, I'm just checking this. Uh, you know, if the clean slate didn't take it off, then it's not going to be. It's not going to come off. So we can paint directly on top of it. That's right. So you can paint. Um, Awesome. You can paint existing cabinets that are maybe in an oil. You can paint oak cabinets. You can paint metal cabinets. You can paint melamine cabinets. Um, so we cleaned this before we went live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the clean slate. And so that way it's ready to go. Are there? Yes. Questions. We have a question from Instagram. I have cherry cabinets with the knots in them. What would I use to fill the knot holes? So do you want, I'm guessing you want the knot holes to go away, Sherry? That's what it's looking like. It's um, Janine. Janine. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. It's okay. What if, do you think, babe? If there's knots, then what you want to do is get a water-based wood filler and then fill those because a lot of times the knots have splits or cracks and you just fill it with that uh, water-based wood uh, filler or wood putty. Uh, it'll give you directions how long the drying time is let it dry, then you're going to come back and lightly sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper uh, to smooth it out. Sometimes it takes two applications depending on how large or how deep the, uh, the crack in the knot is. So um, you just want to level it out, smooth it out, and then you're ready to paint. Okay. Directly on top of it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've taken our hardware off. We've numbered it. You saw how Jean was numbering it. Um, and making sure that it's going to go in the same area. So don't paint over the part that you numbered. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do the numbers on tape or the, the letters. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're going to work on the doors. So you've taken the doors off, you've taken the drawers out, and we're going to paint on them. So you've created an area maybe on your island, mm -hmm. um, maybe in your garage where you're working. You want to make sure this is a great time of the year to paint your kitchen because the temperatures aren't too extreme. It's not too cold and it's not too hot. Mm -hmm. So you can easily work in your garage. But remember, the One Step Paint has no VOCs. It's water-based, so it's easily cleaned with soap and water um, in your sink, out of your brush, or your tools. Um, it will not come out of clothes. So that this is a testament of the fact that if you get it in your clothes, it's not coming out because you can paint upholstery with it. Um, Shopping Saturday. Shopping Saturday. <laughs> um, Thing is, it doesn't bother me to wear clothes with paint in it. Okay. It's almost like it's it's almost like a badge of honor. And bragging rights. Bragging rights. Yes. That's right. And people will ask me, and they'll say, "Have you been painting lately?" And I'm like, "Of course I have. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time." Yeah. All right. So um, so we want to make sure that the paints uh, shook up really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. This is one of our best selling colors. It's called a good man is hard to find. And you said you'd let me know when you found it. <laughs> Someone so, asked if Jean has a brother. <laughs> two brothers. <laughs> Did you do that? Two brothers. Oh. Two. That's what two. I thought. Okay. All right. So, two yes. Two brothers. He has two brothers, but they're both married, and, and they are just, I got the best one. I love them all to death. Hopefully but, they're not watching. <laughs> but I got the best. family member. Glenn does watch. Hey, Glenn, we love you. <laughs> he has seven children. Um, anyway, we're, that's a whole other Facebook uh, live. So, um, yes. And I, I'm just going to brag on him for just a minute. And they're like, okay, shut up and just paint yeah, cabinets. Let's, let's I, I love the fact that everybody, too, that works here, right before we went live, Laurie works here, and she said, um, uh, he's special. Like, he's a gem. And I'm like, I know that. Don't, don't go there. But he is. He's, he is a total gem. So anyway, enough about that. All right, so um, so the bundle that we have for you, remember, you're going to get these three colors. Guys, it's a deal. It's a really, really good deal because I want you to be able to go to Restore. I want you to be able to buy those cabinet doors for a dollar. I got this for a dollar. So I can turn around and I can paint it. I can put it in my kitchen in the morning. I can look at it. I can move it around different parts of the kitchen. 
Um, main thing is I can, I could, if I was doing this, I'd let my husband see what I was doing because he's going to say, you are not painting our cabinets. Mm -hmm. But once you do this and he sees it and he sees the durability of it and how beautiful it is, then he'll go, okay, I'm with you. I'll help you do this. All right, so talk us through painting mm -hmm. the cabinet. Mm -hmm. We've already cleaned it with a clean sleigh. Mm -hmm. The, now, and you may say, well, why did you take the doors and drawers out? It's so much easier to paint these totally. laying down than being on a ladder and trying to uh, paint hanging off a ladder. And you know, a lot of times there's accidents that can happen uh, that will uh, prevent you from finishing the job. And then I'll put something under it. I've got now the door is raised up so that I can paint the edges and not be painting the uh, table. Love that. So I'm gonna come back. We've, we've shaken. We've stirred um, the James Bond technique and shaken, not stir. And then we're gonna go back and start painting the cabinet. All right, so do, are we, are, do we have any questions thus far about painting? Lana, we do talk about rolling and we talk about spraying um, and we talk about brushing. I'm just gonna tell you what our preference is, brushing. If you spray, while it's great to spray furniture, you get more of a kind of an orange peely look. You can. You can't. I mean, when you spray, it's more bumpy. Um, when what we're wanting you to get, we want you to get a beautiful, smooth finish on your cabinets. We're just going to say, let's do it the old way, and we're going to brush it on. Because I don't want you mixing. I don't want part of it rolled and part of it brushed. There is no way that it can be identical. So it's best to just to brush it all on. Um, if you've got large, large flat surface areas like countertops, that's a whole other show, uh, but I would tell you to roll um, countertops. But as far as the cabinets are concerned, um, we're going uh, to brush it. So, yes? There's a question for what type of prep do you have to do to each door? All you have to do to each door is clean it with clean slate. That's what Jean's doing. Now, I'll, we're gonna take this question just a minute. I want everybody to notice something. Um, what's the first thing Jean's doing? He's got his door here or his drawer uh, that he's worked. What's the first thing he's doing? Tell us what you're doing, babe. I'm painting. But why are you painting the edges first? Well, I'm painting the edges first because that way, I'll, if you don't, concentrate on those edges that what will happen is that it'll tend to run got it and down the side so, so do those first do let's those do the first. edges first guys yes Facebook what was your question someone wants to know one what the color the blue color is and two can you Ooh, use this fish. paint on hardwood floors yes you can paint on hardwood floors and this gorgeous blue color is called Vintage Affliction. Do you not love that name? I love the color. And that's why I wanted you to be able to play with um, different colors because I want to push you outside of your comfort zone. I want you to do something to go, I would have never thought about painting my kitchen cabinets a color like that. Um, I have an, a friend that had white melamine cabinets, if she's watching, hey Karen, um, and she painted her kitchen cabinets from white melamine and her walls, the same color, um, like a good man is hard to find. That is a gorgeous gray color. Now, if you, if you can handle it, think also about painting the, um, painting the walls the same color. Isn't it striking? What's that? Karen's walls and cabinets. Oh, yeah. I mean, Very oh my gosh, they're so dramatic. They're so, I know this might, this might sound tacky, but they're sexy. I mean, it's like, you like, Okay, Amy, you're going too far. Kitchen cabinets can't be sexy. Yes, they can. They're just incredible. Um, and the white dishes and the countertops are beautiful. All right, so I don't want to talk too much because I, I want them to be learning from, uh, from you. So talk to us what you're doing. Look at these long, clean strokes. And notice where the seams are, where the frame, which they call rails and styles, that create the frame. This is a panel. This is called a raised panel. The reason is the panel is raised. A flat panel would not have this channeling in it. It would just be flat. So this would be called a raised panel door. And all I'm doing is I'm painting in the direction of the rail and the style. 
So that way, um, when you go this direction, mm -hmm. it also is in the mm -hmm. same direction as what the grain would be. So people need to be painting mm -hmm. with, with the, the grain. grain. If at all possible. But also notice I'm not overlapping my brush strokes. I'm not bringing it out and over where that's going to end up kind of like a hashtag uh, when it's said and done. I'm making sure that my seam and my paint stroke is the is same the as same, the door. Same way as Love the door. Love that. Love that. So Jean would be a great person to invite over to have help <laughs> paint your kitchen cabinets. If you invite me over and I see paint cans and brushes everywhere, um, you're going to run for the I hills. Run. But look how easy it glides on. See how easy it is, guys. And here's the other great thing: there's no smell with this. Um, you know, when we talk to people about, especially when they have like professional painters come, mm -hmm. they're going to charge you four or five thousand dollars to paint your kitchen. Um, they're going to shut your kitchen down because they're going to use, they're going to spray oil paint. And the VOCs from that, here's the sad thing. And this is no, no offense to anybody that does this for a living, but I'm just going to tell you, we, they have found that products continue to emit toxins after they're dry. We have found that with uh, certain hardwood floors and linoleums <laughs> and um, fabrics that have formaldehyde in them, products that have been made in China and they have formaldehyde in them, that those toxins continue to emit into the air even long after they're dry. So it's, it's important to be able to work with products that you know that don't have any VOCs, um, that don't have the, the odor and the toxins in them. Um, that's why we love the One Step Paint so mm -hmm. much. And it's so easy. So look at the coverage that you're getting on this. This is going to take about 30 minutes, 45 minutes at the most to dry. I mean, it, it may even dry faster than that. I would really like for you to wait at least 30 minutes before you start to go do the second coat. Keep in mind, too, when you're doing this, that it's better to do two lighter coats. lighter coats than one heavy coat. Heavy coats will tend to crack as it dries. And pull. And um, so we don't want cracking. Right. And we're not trying, again, it's one step paint, not one coat paint. Yeah, that's so real important, not... guys. A lot of people think it's one coat. It's one step, meaning you just clean it and then you paint. Um, all right, so are there any questions right now? Yes. Do the brush strokes self-level? That's, that's another reason for the type of brush that you use. So you'll notice we're using a microfiber synthetic brush with this. Um, when you're painting with the One Step, we suggest don't use the chip brushes that we use all the time. This chip brush is a natural bristle, but it's going to have a tendency to leave brush strokes. Uh, when you're working with the uh, synthetic brush, look how it's laying it down. It's and, totally different. And with a true chalk-based paint, such as ours, because we don't use a lot of synthetics and toxic high VOC ingredients, we don't. There's, there's no VOCs, it's certifiable green, so you're not gonna have all of these synthetic leveling agents in it like you would with latex paint. And that's the beauty of chalk paint, that it does have more of an older old world feel to it when you see it. Now, let's look at these doors right here. Let's take a look and we want to make sure this lights on here so that way y'all can see that we don't cover that up. Look at the gray. What well, what Jean's painting is a good man is hard to find. So let's take let's get a close up on the the cameras with this dark gray. Look at the finish to it. So you see it's going to dry a little darker. Of course, that's got two coats on it. But see the finish on it? Um, it you don't really see the brush strokes that much. It's, it's thinned out. You want to make sure as he is doing, let's just get a look as far as, go back again and show us, as far as the finessing that you're doing. It's a very light touch that you come back over the whole mm -hmm. thing uh, just to be able, just barely touching it mm -hmm. where it feathers that out and makes it really pretty. Mm -hmm. Great job. And I don't want to, and once I've put my paint on, 
and it's starting to dry, I don't want to come back and continue painting because no. what will happen is, as the paint's drying, I'm going to disrupt the flow out by painting over it again with the brush. Mm -hmm. So once I've put it on, I'll leave it alone. My second coat is going to be my money coat. That's the coat that's going to give me the finish, giving me the coverage. Uh, it's going to be uh, smooth it out even a little bit more and filling in some of the brush marks with that second coat. Uh, so that second coat's going to be the be your uh, well, I call it the money money coat. Well, because it's going to finish it out, mm -hmm. and two coats should take care of it. Now, mm -hmm. here's the other thing: if you're working with Bauhaus buff, like I said, this is our number one selling color ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are tons of people all over the country and world, for that matter, because we sell in Dubai and we sell in other countries that um, you they painted their kitchen cabinets with Bauhaus buff, and it's beautiful. But, but it may take three coats if you're covering a really dark mahogany or walnut cabinet you may have mm -hmm. to put on more coats with this mm -hmm. um, another thing you can do is you can get a water-based um, sealer primer and put that on first and then put the Bauhaus buff on because that way you won't have uh, as many coats because it's not going to, it's going to give you better coverage all right, so now we are going to talk about uh, waxing. Um, you don't have to wax. Oh. That's, that's the beauty. Um, a lot of people like matte cabinets, and you can do that. Um, these, are, these are just a, a particle board. A lot of times your melamine cabinet doors are going to be a particle board like this with that. Um, Jean, explain to us about the... Melamine, like what is that made out of? And what when people are like, I have melamine cabinets or mm -hmm. I have metal cabinets. Tell mm -hmm. us about melamine. Melamine, basically the uh, core is going to be a type of particle board or MDF, meaning MDF is a very fine, fine particle in glue and other composite material. Uh, then the particle board is maybe a little bit larger pieces of wood and glue pressed together to create that core. Then what makes the melamine is that plastic type coating that's applied over that core and gives you that slick, uh, and the melamine comes in different colors. Um, probably the most common is the white, but it also has available in black and uh, several other colors, I'm sure. Uh, but it's just that plastic, thin, thin, thin uh, veneer, as you would call it, that's over that uh, core and um, creates that finish. So this can be quite a transformative thing for you to be able to paint your melamine cabinets um, in our one-step paint. So now I want to show you something. Here's the other thing a lot of people worry about. This is a cabinet door. I'm going to hold these up that we did earlier. And so this was painted in um, the good man. This comes in the bundle. This is, this is painted in a good man. It's hard to find. has a beautiful matte finish. If you don't want to, you do not have to paint this. You can clean this with Windex. You can clean this with, uh, with a not too heavy of an abrasive cleaner, but you can wipe it right off and it's not going to affect it. That is a major difference between our paint and many other chalk-based paints is because um, if you if you don't seal it and you wipe it the other companies the pigment will actually come off so that's why they tell you you have to wax it or you have to use a matte sealer you do not on ours it's not necessary so you do not have to seal this so to get started there's no sanding no priming and no stripping you just clean it you paint directly on top of it but only if you want to get a really cool finish can you do it with waxing, and that's what we're going to show you. Are we okay on questions? Mm -hmm. Are we good? All right. So if you're just now tuning in, we're coming to you live from Memphis, Tennessee, and we're talking about rescuing and restoring your kitchen cabinets. So if you want to ask us questions, we're going to answer them right now because we want you to be successful. We've also put a great bundle together that allows you to be able to get a good man is hard to find, Bauhaus buff, and vintage affliction. Um, along with your waxes and your clean slate and your brush because I am really encouraging you to go to Restore this weekend if you wanted to paint your kitchen cabinets and paint your cabinets that you buy there for a dollar so you can put them in your kitchen and see what they'll look like and you'll see how they adhere, you'll see how hardy it is, how beautiful it is, 
then you're ready to pull the trigger and you can paint your kitchen yourself. Because as we were saying earlier, you can look at spending uh, four or five thousand dollars on having your kitchen professionally done. You can very easily buy four or five cans of our one step paint um, and your waxes and paint your kitchen for under two hundred dollars. It's very easy and, and affordable. All right, so one thing that we've done here, and we wanted you to see the difference, and I want to show you, here's the other, look at the sheen on that. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Is that gorgeous? Now, here's a strawberry. Somebody was eating some strawberries earlier, and I said, can I have that? I want to show people something, because a lot of people think, I can't <clears throat> clean my cabinets. They're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna be like a professional finish. So, here's a strawberry. I know this is really gross. Like, I'm gonna get, like if there was food, spaghetti sauce, now I feel like the ShamWow man. If there was food or spaghetti sauce or whatever, your kids have dirty fingers, they're coming up, they're getting it all over here, and you're like, my kitchen cabinets have to be cleanable. My kitchen cabinets, I can't, I can't paint my kitchen cabinets. Yes, you can, because look, look at, literally, look at this. Look at this. So I'm just gonna take that and wipe that off. Does that make you feel better? It's kind of sad that I had to grab Laurie's strawberry to be able to have as an example. I don't even have to have a cleaner on there. We've put these waxes together and how we have formulated them is for them to be, ooh, it smells good too. <laughs> it smells like strawberries now. Um, so it allows you to be able to have a really hearty finish on your cabinet door that you can paint and if you want the look. Now a lot of people set, may say, I love it just like that. Well then, then you can leave it like that if you want it to be matte. It's not gonna be as easy to clean as this one, but that's why in the bundle we gave you this. So, um, but I wanna show you how to, to get the ceruzing. Do you wanna do, you wanna do this for me? Sure, I'd like to. All right, so um, that's done a little bit heavier mm -hmm. Um, and we did allow it to dry, but it goes on so easy. Now, ceruzine, what you looking for, babe? I, uh, you need something to offload on it. We put it on kind of heavy. So, um, I want to put this first right here, so that way everybody sees what it is that we're doing. So, we're showing you how to do a ceruzine finish. You can do it lighter. This is really heavy. Um, so, if you want to do it heavier, you're going to want to be able to come back and use some steel wool on it after it dries. Big, big tip here. Um, if you want it to be heavy like this and a little bit more grainy, put the ceruzine wax on a little heavier and then after it has a tendency to dry, even overnight, you can come back and you can buff this with the 4 aught steel wool and it's going to give you this gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Awesome. All right, so Jean's put a little bit of the ceruzine wax on the um, on the cardboard. We may need to do it a little heavier, honey. Thank you. But it literally is this easy. Now here we were talking about this. You know, of course we're going to take our hardware off. We're going to number our doors. Um, we're going to clean our cabinet doors. Then we've painted them with two coats, and now we're going to be waxing it. But here's the deal. Look at me for just a second. I would prefer for you to put your cabinet doors back up, put your drawers back in, don't put the hardware on yet, and then start waxing. I would prefer that you not wax them before you put them up because I want you to be able to look at your entire kitchen um, so you're, you're making sure that the way you're waxing it is all the same on the area that's on the cabinet as well as the cabinet door or the drawers. Is everybody with me? The other thing that we didn't talk about, when you go to paint your cabinet doors, you can paint your doors first and your drawers, but when you go to actually paint your cabinet doors, you're going to want to be able to tape off this area uh, with some painter's tape to protect your walls. Um, and be able to protect your floors or maybe your backsplash. Um, the cool thing is you can use one-step paint on Formica and you can use it on uh, tile, but that's a whole other show. But you do want to protect the walls, yes? We have a question. Are the two cabinets the same color, the one with the wax and the one without? Yes, they were the same color. That's why we wanted to show you a before and an after. Who asked that question? Um, that Seattle girl. Seattle girl, yes. So all this was was the um, 
a good man it's hard to find with cerise and wax on top of it do you love this do y'all love this finish look at the sheen of it it's just gorgeous Yum, yum, yum. I love it, love it, love it. They're okay. also asking, do you paint both sides of the cabinet doors? Yeah. Yes, of course you can. And here's the fun thing. And you saw on the imagery, let's look at this cabinet. Look at this. So this was an actual kitchen that I did. Um, I used it on um, a morning show that I went on in New York. And this was an actual kitchen that I bought from Restore. This was the before. That's why we showed it to you on social media. So I took the doors off and painted the insides. A different color it's kind of fun so like the other thing is this this bottom cabinet is a darker color if you like um, and you're, if you're feeling um, adventurous I want to encourage you to do that because you usually will paint the top cabinets in a lighter color and you'll paint your bottom cabinets um, in a darker color and that way it's anchored um, it's you don't want to do dark on the top and light on the bottom you need to visually anchor them by having a darker color so that's another reason why um, in painting your cabinets uh, that you can um, experiment with the doors from Restore and the colors that we have so that way you can see them. So we even paint the insides and yes, you can paint the, um, the inside of the actual cabinet door the same color as the outside. So yes, yes. How well will the wax hold up on the cabinets if it's near a dishwasher with steam and all that? No problem, no problem. Um, you know, Carnuva wax is used on bowling alleys, and you they're rolling bowling balls, and people are using them. It's it, the the longer it cures, the hardier it gets. Um, so yes, no, it's no problem at all. That's why I squished that strawberry on there, um, and I wiped it off because I wanted you to be able to see that how how incredibly hardy that is. Yes. There's a question about the wax. Does it always produce a distressed look? No. It doesn't always If you produce let it, if, look at the difference between yeah. these two. Yeah, and before no. it's been buffed, too. This is, hasn't been buffed. And, and that doesn't dry. have as much wax on it, FYI, as we put on well, this one. Well, what will happen is if I let this dry and then we buff it, it's going to be much softer. Yes. Because I, if I don't go back and steel wool it, as Amy did, it's going to stay It's going to stay softer like this. I like the sheen on this. Mm -hmm. well, I think now it's yum-yum. You can yum. still get the sheen by when this dries and buff, right. but it's the steel wool that gave you that Makes the difference. Moment, Which, you if you wouldn't mind, grab that Vintage Affliction mm -hmm. and let's show them. Yes. I want to know what the wax would look like on a white cabinet. So, well, I have one I want to show you. Here is Vintage Affliction in the bundle. This is the color that you get. And I love doing white cabinets at the top and colors like this on the bottom. They're mm -hmm. so fun. And then paint the insides of your top cabinets this color. So, so fun. So, um, so this is one that this is not waxed. And then we just used the clear wax on this one because a lot of people just like having something that's kind of protected. Now look, you can come back if you want with some 4 aught steel wool um, and just buff it up. Mm -hmm. Just add some protection. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do that. Mm -hmm. Or you can just buff it with a rag. And all we did is we just brushed on um, a thin coat of your Mind Your Own, bees, mind your own Beeswax and allowed it to dry about 30 minutes and then just buff it. Now watch this. This is um, just going to take some water. This could very well be some coffee. This could very well be, look at this. It's, you can't mess it up, guys. Where's my strawberry? Did we wipe it off? Here's your food. <laughs> There's your food. It's not going to mess it up. So that way, we're just going to come back and we're just going to wipe it off. And that was with the clear wax. Does that kind of help? Beeswax. And that was our, our Mind Your Own Beeswax. Uh, yes. What yes. is the difference between the waxes? Jean, you want to tell them? Mm -hmm. Well, beeswax is just that. It's beeswax. Uh, has probably a little bit of canuba in that as well. And then your ceruzing wax is their canuba wax, but it has calcium carbonate, which is chalk. So that's where your white 
comes from in there. If, mm -hmm. the, if that wasn't in there, it would just be a clear wax. Right. And you can also use, um, this is why I want you to play, this is why I want you to be able to go get some cabinet doors so that way you can do different techniques on them. Um, I can even come back, I'll just squirt some directly on there. Get that. Out. If you want to be able to do, should have offloaded it, they're all, I have people at home going, Oh my gosh, what did she just do? So I'm just doing a real thin sheen of um, that carnauba wax on there that I can come back and actually buff it and I'll get a beautiful sheen. All right, so something else I wanna be able to show you is Mind blown, mind blown. Let me show you what else you can do. You can take a little bit of your one-step paint. I think I've got a spoon. You can take a little bit of this one-step paint. Can you see that? Go in there. Guess what I'm gonna do, guys? You can mix our one-step paint and wax together. So that way, let's say I've got a kitchen cabinet. Now, don't do this on top of your melamine cabinets. They've got to paint it first, right, Jane? Correct. You're going to need to paint it first. Don't do this directly on melamine. I want you to paint it. It's not going to work. And then that way, just mix that up. You saw about the consistency. It won't take much. So then I'll dip it in here like this, offload it. Look at this. Now a lot of times when I'm working, I will work fairly quickly because I, I don't want the wax to dry. You're gonna have to work really quickly. And then um, this is not about putting excess on. I don't want it too much. It's more about a light application um, I'm just wanting to get a really pretty color here. I love creating colored waxes with the one-step paint because um, it really makes it look a little bit more provincial. Um, Jean, what's your word on this? Now I'm gonna come back. Awesome. Awesome. I'm gonna come back with just a brush that does not, see I've got one that I did my wax and one that I'm kind of offloading on. See how fun and easy this is, guys? But you can play with it and experiment. You're gonna get all this in your bundle with great savings. Do you love that? I love that. This is Darlin. Darlin, 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 Darlin. You could create all these different looks with this bundle and be able to lay it up and go, hey, I never thought about doing my kitchen cabinets like that, but I would love that. And here the great thing about it is, once this dries, ta-da, once this dries, I can buff it, just like I did this cabinet door, um, and I'll have, the same th I'll have the same protection against water, against food, against, um, anything that I'm cooking with, chocolate mm -hmm. sauce or mm -hmm. spaghetti sauce or mm -hmm. anything like that, I can come back and I can buff this with a rag or my four out steel wool and I've got protection mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful. You know, the great thing about it is it, it looks like a professional cabinet finish. Um, and I will tell you, we have a lot of people as far as business to business, we have professionals that use our products that go in and paint kitchen cabinets that they don't want to go to the trouble. Um, of setting up spray rigs and spraying it with oil. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I don't want the oil in my house. A lot of you know that's why I drink water because I'm asthmatic um, and this doesn't make me cough. Um, and as well as working with the waxes. Now here's the thing, when you make your colored waxes, you're gonna need to clean them with the clean slate out of your brushes. Just FYI, you can't use soap and water to clean your brushes. Were there any other questions before we close out today? 
question on Instagram about can you use these techniques on your front door? Oh, that's a good question. I, the door is a little bit different in the fact be, um, of the sun. Um, now, yeah, and the, the thing is, if you don't put the wax on too thick, if you put it on thin like this and buff it, you'll be okay. Um, don't put it on too, too thick because it'll have a tendency when it's, like we live in Memphis and the humidity and the summer heat, it'll get up to 110 degrees here. Mm -hmm. um, and it will be a hard, you know, it'll be harder depending on if you've got direct sun, if there's a porch mm -hmm. over it, mm -hmm. if you've got some protection like that, yeah, it would be, it would be fun. Yes, Facebook. Kayla would like to know, um, she already has white cabinets. Okay. If she does the wax mixed with the paint, can she do that directly on her cabinets or does she need to paint them first? You need to paint them first. And let me tell you why, Kayla, and that's a great question, is the fact that how I can do this and how it absorbs and how it works around, um, it will go into the actual paint and the finish. That's what makes our... The fact that we've developed all these products, we didn't go and have our name put on some paint that somebody makes, we developed all of this. Um, and our one-step paint will allow that wax to absorb and go down into the pigmentation of the um, paint itself. And then that way you can buff it and can be beautiful. If you use this process that we're teaching you with the waxes on another cabinet that maybe is oil or um, melamine. melamine or another kind of paint material, you're not gonna have the same success. Yes, you're gonna to have to repaint them. Bauhaus buff is the color. Way to go. Are we good, Instagram? Instagram saying, can you use glazed over on the cabinets? Yes, you can. That's a whole other show. Mm -hmm. But yes, glazed over is a product that we have that you can mix with mica powders. You can mix with a one mm -hmm. step. You can mm -hmm. mix, um, you can mix kind of like with a color, like if they wanna do some antiquing. Yes, you can totally use glazed over on top of the one step. Great question. Are we good? All right, guys, so we went over a lot of information today. Our suggestion is grab a friend that you like, the work, their work ethic. That you love watching them work. That's, that's the key. <laughs> that you like working with them. And uh, you want to make sure that you take your hardware off that you have bags that you put it in, that you keep up with it because um, that's gonna make the project not- Oh, there it is. <laughs> that's gonna make the project not end well. You're gonna go, where do we put our hardware? Um, you know, the other thing that we didn't go over with everybody was the fact that if they have holes and that's not, they don't wanna use the same hardware. Hmm. Let's say, uh, that's a good question. If you wanna change your hardware, uh, you wanna use something different and where the current holes are uh, will not work for where the new hardware is going to go, then you can plug those holes again. You can use uh, a wood filler. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to make something because the hole is so big and goes all the way through. You may want to take a little piece of, uh, uh, mix a little sawdust or something with it so that it fills easier. And again, let it dry, sand, uh, and you want to keep applying, drying, sanding until it's smooth so you don't see uh, an indentation where the hole used to be. Uh, just a little, you know, is the more, more professional you can make it, the better. So that way you'll do your, yes. We have one more question. Okay. I have a veneer that was applied over old cabinets. Will one step go over the veneer? Yes. Yes. And you use the clean slate first. Yes. Clean it and paint it. Yes. Yay. You know, and we joke about this. Um, Jean jokes about it. As far as with the one-step paint, you can use it on glass. You can use it on wood floors. You can paint on top of hardwood, lacquered floors. You can use it on um, any type of, like, lacquered type surface from a factory. You can use it on metal. You can use it on cloth. There's different processes that we mm -hmm. teach you on this. Ceramic. Ceramic. Um, so people will say, well, okay, I don't get it. So what can you what can you not use it on? And Jean said, well, tell them small children. <laughs> so don't use it on your children. PC. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's a joke. So anyway, so just make sure you keep up with your hardware. Mm -hmm. Put it, um, put the knobs together. If you're just now tuning in, go back. Be sure and do hashtag replay.
um, mm -hmm. will take you through the whole process. Number your doors, tape off your walls, mm -hmm. clean your cabinets really well with a clean slate, then paint your doors. It's gonna take probably two coats, allow it to dry about 30 minutes in between. There's no need to sand or anything after you've painted them. And then you can have fun with your wax. Put your doors up before you wax. You wanna wax with the doors and drawers in before mm -hmm. you put the hardware back on um, and then allow it to dry at least 30 minutes, an hour. Take a break, go back the next day. If you want a high sheen, use four aught steel wool over your wax. If not, you can buff it with a lint-free rag. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope this was informative. Um, if it's informative and it helps you, if you think it's information, that could help someone else, please share these videos that we do. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Um, and happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers yes. out there. We love and yes. appreciate all of our followers. Thank mm. you so much.